All right, components, inverter charges. This is another part of high energy DC systems. Pretty intuitive. Um, you got to size the inverters for your load that you're going to do. Uh, the chargers, if you're at shore power, if they do have an AC generator, that can certainly supplement the charging of your, high, of, of your big, big battery bank. Um, oftentimes, we will see in these higher energy systems multiple inverter chargers. Uh, some brands, uh, <laughs> I got to say, uh, Victron overwhelmingly, I think. I'm looking for Rick where he ended up at. I think Victron overwhelmingly is the brand of inverter oh, chargers. Yeah, I mean, you know, they just make a great product and you've got a room full of blue. So you guys know about all that stuff. Um, there will be usually, on the more modest systems, uh, like on mine, Viking Star, I actually have two inverter chargers. And I did that for two reasons. One, the first one I bought, the spec sheet said it could start my compressor and guess what? It couldn't. So I went and bought a 3000 watt variant and it was able to. So that's one reason I ended up. The other is I'm away from the dock eight months out of the year and I don't like to call beaver planes to fix my problems. I'm a bit more independent. So I have a level of redundancy. If one goes sideways, I have another one because I'm also not camping for the rest of my life and we have a washer dryer. So that has to keep working. Um, often we'll find multiple Victron, uh, inverters either stacked to get 220 or uh, parallel, and it depends on, on your inverter charger supplier. And there are other good inverter chargers out there. My, I think today they're pretty much all pure sine wave and they're all pretty good. Uh, if you go back 20 years ago, there were pure sine waves that weren't very pure sine wave. Um, and uh, we can have a conversation about how value engineered affected the ability of a pure sine wave inverter charger to run that washer dryer, <laughs> if you want. All right, um, the, la the one thing I will tell you about is the 48 volts. So one of the benefits of 48 volts, aside from a higher capacity alternator head, is smaller wire sizes, right? That's intuitive. It also means smaller inverters. You, when you design something largely, the limiting factor is, is the amount of current going through. That's the thing that tells me how many FETs I have to have, how much cooling I have to have, how big of a transformer I have to have. If I cut the current to a fourth, I cut the number of FETs and cooling and transformer. I mean, not really, but 48 volt inverters are typically smaller. They're often less expensive and they're often more efficient. So that's another benefit of going to 48 volts. By and large, in the RV industry, we're seeing it be adopted fairly quickly. My belief is the marine industry is still a couple years away before you start seeing wide adoption. So you might start seeing some early adopters these days, but uh, it'll probably be a few years away before they do. <laughs>